to share with you a, a little new moon ritual that I like to do. And today is the new moon. Um, I don't know if this thing worked. I guess it did. Let's assume it did. Anyway, I'm going to share with you my new moon ritual. Um, I take a little pot. And these are my chia seeds. My chia seeds. And I, I say a little blessing to them for what I would like to manifest in this new moon cycle. And for me, this time, it's uh, clarity. Clarity for where we're at right now. Clarity of mind, clarity of heart, clarity of pussy, you know, because all of these things really have to work together. And I find if I take care of those three, the solar plexus kind of takes care of itself. That sense of personal power kind of comes from working with the other three. And then I plant them. And by the time the full moon comes, they'll have sprouted. And ideally, so we'll have the clarity that I planted. And I guess I wanted to share this with you tonight because um, I, uh, I find this new moon to be extra special. I feel like we're all kind of like in this little seed position now. Like the seed doesn't know what it's going to become. It only knows it's not going to be a seed anymore. And I feel like I'm in that position right now. And I feel like we're all kind of poised in that position right now. But we don't know what's coming. We don't know what we're going to become just like the seed doesn't. We just know that we're not going to be seeds anymore. And I guess... Being in that home space, I mean, we've all spent so much time at home now, but I guess have we really, you know? I think one of the things that I really appreciate about this time is that my practice has really deepened. My sense of being in, um, in a home space, like not just in my house, but that compression actually being, uh, both more peaceful and more intense. You know, I've been using this box breathing a lot. Whenever I feel like I'm confronted with something that knocks me off of that home space, and that's like the breathing in, two, three, four, five, hold, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hold, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, hold, two, three, four. And I find that that gets me so completely grounded in my body that if I encounter something that knocks me out of that a little bit, I can use my rare protocol, which is coming out of that home space, coming out of feeling completely in my body. And then I can, the first R, receive it. The A, assess it. How do I need to react to this? What is it? Is it a threat? Is it a gift? I mean, gift means poison in German, but poison is also a matter of dose. So, you know. The second R is respond. Can I respond and not react? Not be in that reactive position where I clench but actually respond from a softer place. And then E, exit. And I exit back to my home space. And I'm able to be, be truly serene no matter what I encounter. 
And it's like, it's almost like from that home space, I turn around and there's, oh, like I left my Christmas tree up, right? I didn't really, but you know, metaphorically speaking. So there's a Christmas tree up and under the Christmas tree is a bunch of gifts. And I don't know, I don't know what's in those boxes, but it's up to me to allow it to be Christmas morning knowing that I can return to that home space and take in whatever is in those boxes. Because if I don't, if I'm like, oh, you know what? I don't, no thanks, not for me. Then the calendar kind of keeps rolling around and then it's Halloween comes and those boxes turn into hungry ghosts that will crawl into your mouth while you're sleeping. And then you have to try to get those things out, right? Like if you refuse, if you refuse adversity, if you refuse discomfort, it's still coming for you. But if you can meet it with open arms, if you can meet it from that very grounded home space, then it, it, doesn't, need, it doesn't need to knock you out. You can actually take it in. I think one of the things that I've been working on with people and in my own practice is really emotional metabolism. It's not that you're never going to get angry or never going to be manically happy or incredibly crushingly full of despair. But it's really in how you meet that and how you metabolize that. Like I, I had a situation the other day that actually made me fearful for the first time in a while. I've shed a lot of fears. But I, someone showed up on my doorstep that I did not want to see. And at first I was, I met that with, with anger out of like protection. Like I get the fuck out of here. I need you to go away. And then afterwards there was this acceptance of that, like a full, just fully being with that. Like that was actually the most appropriate protective response. And did I stay angry? No, actually, I find myself lately in this, uh, with a real compassion for hungry ghosts. So when those gifts under the tree sit there long enough, and then they start to haunt when they turn into hungry ghosts and open up the box themselves, cause you wouldn't dare to, I try to meet them with compassion as well. It was part of this ceremony tonight where um, we actually make an offering to all the hungry ghosts. And I think there are a lot of them out there. I think there are a lot of them in positions of power right now. Hungry ghosts in, in Buddhism are these uh, bloated little creatures with very, very tiny throats and very big bloated bellies and they just can't take nutrition in. And no matter how much you give them, they just can't be nourished and they always need more. And I think we can all relate to that, like having some kind of hungry ghost experience in our lives where there's just this insatiable need for more. I mean, our whole culture is sort of built on it, but it is definitely not conducive to emotional sobriety. <laughs> when you get drunk on desire, uh, you wreak havoc. And that's uh, sort of the job of the hungry ghost to nudge and nudge and nudge. And one thing that keeps them nudging is this sort of identity turbine. You know, if, if you're out of your body, if you're out of your home space, right? And all of your energy is kind of up here. Like if you're anxious or afraid, you're not even in your body anymore. You're in this space kind of just above your body, maybe a little bit to the left. And it's like a turbine that's so loud that you can't actually let anything else in. And I think us actually generate an incredible amount of energy, squander, actually squander really an incredible amount of energy to keep that identity turbine going. We'll put everything into it. But what happens is when we can't really hear the call of anything else or say, say you hate your job, right? Well, what is a purposeful job? It's a vocation. It's called a vocation for a reason and that, whole idea of vocation, the word vocation comes from to call. And how can you hear the call 
of your true sense of service, your true vocation, if you're so busy running that identity turbine all the time. So one way to turn off that identity turbine is to notice that it's going in the first place. And then you can come back to that home space. And then that thing, that encounter with either your own thought or something outside yourself, that's generating that anxiety, that's initiating you generating that anxiety really, can be noticed. And once we start to notice those things, then we can actually have a little more energetic mastery over how far they're able to go. Ah, so those are just my new moon thoughts. I feel like we're in such a, such a precious position right now, such a precious crossroads where we've actually had this time to go inward so much more and to get some sense of what's really important to us and what we really want and what we want to do going forward. Like my little seeds that I planted tonight, you know, each one of them will become a chia sprout because that's all they know how to be. So they know how to be it completely. They know what they are without even knowing in the sense that we believe we know things. They know their original face, which makes me think, do you know how cancer gets started? Cancer gets started from an error in transcription. So a cell reproduces, but it reproduces not as it was before, but how it's become by being influenced by either internal or external forces. So it's not actually remembering who it is. And I think uh, a lot of us get caught in the same thing by influence of either internal, our own thoughts, forces, or external forces, we forget who we are. And then we start creating errors of transcription based on that identity turbine instead of our actual essence. We stop hearing the call, we stop hearing the vocation, we lose a sense of what our true service is and we ourselves become malignant. And I think we're at a point now where we, we really can't afford to be malignant anymore. If we don't hear the call, then our occupation becomes our preoccupations and we end up having a life that basically pursues filling landfills, et cetera, et cetera, and feeling a little bit empty which I think is easy to do if we get lost in the white noise of the identity turbine and never really look at what that's made of and never really learn how to truly ground ourselves and stop it or at least still it for a moment. Like think of the Wizard of Oz, right? Dorothy wasn't given, she wasn't given a ruby beret, right? Because that sense of going home is not gonna ever come from your head. It's gonna come from dropping way the fuck down into your body, down to your feet. Home is always gonna be where your feet are, always. And it's very easy to let that energy come all the way back up and fuel, fuel that identity turbine again and squander and squander and lose yourself in the noise. The noise of your own making And I say this also because I'm enrolling my emotional sobriety practice group. And this is, uh, these are some of the things that we work on in there. And if it's something that you would like to cultivate for yourself, especially I think in this time going forward, I think we all have to really think about whether we wanna just go back to the way things were or try to, I don't know if that's really gonna be possible or really see this as a new beginning, really plant those seeds consciously and think about what we want to become. And honestly, the way the world's moving today in two weeks, it could be different. <laughs> we could be actually eating what we've planted today. So if you think that might be of interest to you, send me a message and we can set up a Zoom call. 
and uh, either way, have a beautiful new moon. And I hope we will take this opportunity, this darkness and this silence to still your own identity turbine and to ground yourself in your home space and to really listen for the call. Good night. <laughs>